Sure. So I actually like this. So this is, I mean, obviously depending on composition, um, sometimes you are going to shift in, but I, sometimes I look at Echo a lot like this current Sojourn playstyle, where you want to play in a way to where you're going to get your shift forced, but not in a way to where you're going to have to shift in. So in other words, if you could play, look at this aggressive angle you're playing. Here. A lot of damage, a lot of damage, a lot of damage, a lot of damage. The diva, the diva has a really, the diva has to shift you out, and but then you just go out to begin with. You always have an escape route, but you're playing so aggressively that you force them to have to shift in to clear you out. So I'd rather you sh do this and then have to shift out than for you to shift in and then you're, you get caught dead. You kind of see what I'm saying? Right, okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, okay, yeah, this is, this is okay. Let, let's, let's, let's look at this again. Is it okay to like ignore the, because I know there's like fighting going on to my right here. I kind of feel like if I can you know, just kind of bug their backline. They can't follow this diva as well. Yeah, but I don't, I don't yeah. know if that's the right play here. I, I think it's okay. But but here's what I would consider. Let's let's look at this from a macro perspective, okay? Because because that's something you're good at, right? You can zone backline a little bit here. But if I ask you right now, what what is that? Han what can that Hanzo really shoot right now? And I think there's like okay, there's RNG shots on backline, which obviously he can do. But I look at like who could provide more value in this initial trade right now. Not just the frontline trade, but just the trade period. Does Hanzo slash Ana or you? I see. Yeah, I've you got a, a nice angle on them, right. and they they're kind of out of the fight right now. Right, You're, they're already out of the fight whether you spam them or not right now. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're, they're just angles aren't particularly good. Whereas you could put out an absolute metric butt ton of damage on this on this Genji, on this Diva, on this 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 Moira, land all the stickies in the world. You've earned this position, and again, you have the shift so that they can't even push you out of this. So I would take that aggressive position and then just shoot. Like uh, one of the things that I've always said is just shoot what's easy, right? Just shoot what's easy. Like right now. Out, the easiest thing to shoot is like what's directly in front of you so like this is i understand your reasoning here but then think about the amount of damage that you could have been putting the previous three to four seconds just by spamming here right sure okay. so much so much more damage this is what you have to be careful about so this is kind of what we talked about right so you got your shift force unlucky go next now right now what do you need to be aware of uh, well, there's definitely fighting going on on my right, okay. um, and I don't have the shift to get out, so I, right. I'm kind of on this really aggressive right. angle, and I don't, I don't have it. So remember, this is the thing with shift, right? Where it is your get out of jail free card. If you don't have it, it doesn't mean you can't one v one. It's just you better win the one v one, otherwise you will lose the one v one, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that like this allows you to just bail from any one v one. You start losing. Well, you're taking a one v one right now, and you're taking it very aggressively. I don't like this. I would much mm. prefer, rather you prefer you could kind of cheese this, be careful, be careful. And then if you, as soon as that shift comes to like one second, then you can play aggressive because if that Hanzo like lands a shot on you, well, it doesn't matter. You're, you're going to be okay. I don't like the level of aggression right now where you could be playing it very passively and then waiting for that shift to come up so that you, then you can play it aggressively. You got to see what I'm saying? There's two options I see. Okay, so right now, right now. Okay, so this is actually perfect. What's the problem with your positioning right now? It's not a good angle, right? Angle, angle, angle. Blah, blah, blah. But what's the problem? Um. Well, my team's not quite ready to fight, I don't think. Okay, yeah, that, that, not. that's true. That's true. But also look at this. Look at the soldier positioning. Look at the bat positioning. Look at the Moyer positioning. You kind of see what I'm saying? Mm. Is it feasible so, or reasonable for you to be able to get a lot of pressure from this position right now? Not really. They're right. at better ranges right. than, for themselves than I am. Right, exactly. So you really have to make a decision here. You've got two options. What are those two options? Uh, I guess it would be either shift in on somebody, even though I'm not really in shift range, but just try and get closer to try and get in my mm -hmm, range. Mm -hmm. or, or back off this angle and wait kind of in main and wait until sure, my team moves sure. in. Sure, so, so this is the, exactly. So you either could basically exploit the mercy pocket and be like, shift in, sticky, and just murder this guy, right? High risk, high mm. reward, right? If you get this angle, you get the kill, great, then, then the fight's lost for them, it's over. They can't win. Or you can go, okay, that's more of an effective range, I can't do that, especially if you don't have a pocket, right? Then you would go to here. Now, that doesn't feel amazing, but why might it not, it, what, why might it be okay? Look at the soldier's positioning again, right? What can he see from here? Yeah, I see. He, it's see kind it? of like before where he's 
he's kind of too far out of the fight to do right, anything. Right, Or at so least not meaningful. Right, so what ends up happening is then you're like, okay, soldier, if you want to gatekeep me, fine. I'm going to play in an angle to where I'm going to be doing more damage than you. The soldier can't gatekeep you and output the maximum damage at the same time. For example, if this is, if you're playing soldier here and you want to fight like on this position here, what would be the best spot in the map for the soldier to play? If you, had, if you go anywhere we want, where would you want to go? Um, I mean, where our red sojourn is is yeah, not exactly. bad. Yeah, exactly. He'd want to go right here. But what's the risk of going right here? Well, he's opened up to, to me or right, anybody shooting right. him from you could, the same You could immediately dive him, right? So then he has to, he loses something by playing here. Now you lose something too. So then you're like, okay, screw you, man. Then I'm going to do whatever I want. And then if he goes, oh, shoot, man, I really, I need to start doing more damage. And he's, he starts to walk forward. Maybe he gets a little bit greedy. Well, then now all of a sudden, what does he open himself up to? Mm, I see, yeah. You I see? can go and, and catch him on the rotate right. or something. So anybody trying to counter you, if you adjust, then now all of a sudden you force them to make a decision. So like right now, you're going to do more damage than the soldier is. Alright, so we have copy here. So who do you copy? Who's who's the best copy target right now? Um, I mean, immediate thoughts is D.Va. Um... Mm-hmm. I don't really like Soldier or Genji, I don't think. Okay, um, okay. Fair enough. I think Diva's probably a, a decent low-hanging fruit. I mean, generally tanks aren't always the, as good as they were in Overwatch 1, but if the tank right. has like super, super powerful defensive cooldowns like Diva does, then it's probably fine. Um, like, if if you're a Ryan, you're relying off of your HP, right? If you're a D.Va, you're not relying off. You're relying off of your three freaking second matrix. So uh, <laughs> you, can, you can last a long, long time. So, yeah, I think I think a D.Va copy seems reasonable here. Um, if I, there's a... Well, go ahead. Well, I don't know if Honor or Moira are great. I, I know if I play... Like, if I copy Moira here, I can get my ultimate quickly. But I don't know if that's, like, a fight-winning ultimate that I want to invest... Right, right. ...duplicate into. right. Anna, could if you copied Anna here, what would you do with this Anna with this position right now? Well, right here, yeah, I would just right. die, or I wouldn't have anything to do. Right, um, right. So I would need to probably back up if I wanted to do Anna. I, I would. Well, even then, though, like, like the you copy Anna to get nade sleep value, mostly nade. Mm -hmm. If you're on the floor and they're on the high ground because of the position, you're not going to get nade value. Um, so generally what you'll see is Echoes copy Anna's when they have a good position. Um, and if they don't have a good, like, aggressive position, they won't copy it Anna because they're not going to get cooldown value. Do you kind of see what I'm saying? I see. So if that blue diva wasn't there, could I go there and copy Anna? Would that be yeah, decent? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could. It would be risky because I don't. you would need your team to kind of push up there with you. Otherwise, sure. you'd, get, you'd get cleared. But yeah, there is a world. Like, for example, if you were on defense here, an Anna copy here... Mm, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's a real, real rough time for them. You know? Yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the copy sucked. It's, mm. it's, it's not it's not super complicated um and then you get then your mercy goes for a res and kind of leaves you out in the open um situations like this has always kind of felt weird with echo where it's like there's there's definitely a fight happening but there's nothing like like i could copy anybody on the enemy team but then i just kind of become that person you know it's not like yeah. a like a reaper ultimate where i just i press q and suddenly like i'm killing people or anything right like that. right well well then you also you also have to consider like it's not just about the copy itself providing value it's the fact that it's the second life that provides value so if like you kind of mm. you you do it you use it here right you do use it here you are trying to go aggressive um and then you're like oh i'm not gonna die because i press q but obviously right. like going aggressive here really didn't end up being the worth the investment right because it was mm -hmm. it was maybe i land the stickies on the moira maybe i get the beam okay now i'm not going to none so i'm not saying that this needs to be a mechanical oh you, you need to not do this play because you're not mechanically good enough i'm not sure that even if you are a good echo that this was good if this was like the most important thing i think just simply losing the moira ult and then force them to aggressively push onto you where you can get the copy that you want would have made more sense like for example right now like really what is that moira threatening right now you know uh, i mean the only reason your mercy is even in, in range is because you force her to be in range right like look at the rest of your team's response right. 
you know, everybody's hiding, everybody's okay. You kind of just force aggression and then that forces your copy and then that forces a bad copy and then it forces a fight loss. So just- I see, yeah. Just, just, unless you're in a great position for it, you don't need to do it. Like the deep, do you see what would have happened if you'd not gone for the Moira? Let's watch this. You would have sat here, you would have shot and look who just presents themselves on you. You see? Mm, like, I see. You just, you walk here, you would have stickied, stickied, shot, 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 last possible second copy the D-Vate and you're all good. Let's, let's wrap up the echo then for sure because we talked a little bit about holding aggressive positions and then using your shift as a get out of jail free card. We talked a little bit about, obviously the mechanics need to be cleaner as well. It's something to practice as well. That's the best coaching advice I have for you. Practice your mechanics, ha ha ha. Okay. But the other thing was as well, is if you feel like you are being, people are holding angles that are preventing you from playing the positions that you want. You need to recognize that oftentimes those positions are compromising their damage output too. So then, you adjust, force them to either stay in that crappy position or push up. If they push up, now they're diveable. You kind of see what I'm saying? Um, I see. Okay. Make them play that back and forth seesaw game. And as long as you're anticipating it, you should be good to go. The last little thing we talked about, like we talked about a little bit of thing. We never really got to narrow it down, sadly, but was that ultimate, you know, use it as a get out of jail free card, but don't force stupid aggression just because you have it. Play smart play smart, aggressive, and then get the copy that you want as necessary. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's so with, with duplicate then, would it be would it be worth it to kind of use it as sort of like an entry ultimate, I guess? Or is it just like, um, instead of something like a mid fight? Because it, it feels like, you know, I use it and then I just sort of, you know, if I'm not using it as a second life, I just kind of feel like I just turn into another character, you know? Yeah, well then, um, well then look at the battlefield and be like, what would be the best character to have in this situation, right? We talked a lot about how like, if I were you on defense and I had Echo copy, if the enemy team has an Ana and I'm set up here, man, I might even rather have an Ana over an Echo for this position here because I'm gonna farm that nano. I see. Man, I'm gonna farm that nano super fast. I know I'm gonna get an impactful nade. You know what I'm saying? So then I might just prior. I might not even use it as a get out jail free card. I might just use the cooldown. Or for example, if the enemy team had a Sigma here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Imagine Sigma. Yeah, player. that's nasty too. Yeah. You're gonna get that flux instantly, right? Or if you're on, uh, if you go for a really aggressive flank and then copy their tracer or copy their Sombra, right? Um, or, or I'm um, trying to think of what other options. It would be like, okay, let's just set up for a D.Va play. As soon as they walk to the choke, I'm going to copy the D.Va. I'm going to drop in the back line, shoot, 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 Matrix, shoot, 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 fly out, do it again. Like you could you could almost like look at the enemy comp and be like, hey, is there anything that I can like, is there any hero that I could copy and set up for given the situation, given the position and farm really, really fast? Because you're like, yeah, I just copy another hero. Yes, but also would you prefer to be another hero in that given situation? And do you think that you're gonna be able to farm that hero's ultimate faster? Because obviously that's the other, the low hanging fruit there, right? It's not just about, oh, do I wanna be another hero? Or do I want that other hero's ultimate? Because you're gonna get it if you pick it at the right spot. Can I see what okay. I'm saying? So then would it be worth it in some scenarios to just kind of hold Echo ultimate even for the full fight if I just don't see any like really big opportunities if yeah. i just want to stay echo for that whole fight yeah yeah if you see no big opportunities to i could do more as i could echo than any other hero and or i never really get the the need of the get out of jail free card then yeah don't use it okay there's, there's no reason to use it it's not like diva bomb right like sometimes you just want to be see, diva. Yeah. you know 